music, uh, TV, and publishing. And uh, are the panels back there? Uh, Michael Wolf, who's the founder of Activate, is going to be moderating this panel. So if you're on the next panel, now would be a good time to come on out. Uh, and so on this, I'll let him introduce everyone. But, but uh, we have uh, Sarah Chubb, president of Condé Nast Digital. We have uh, Fred Davis, founding partner of Code Advisors. John Hagel, uh, co-chairman of the Center for the Edge of Deloitte. And Abner Ronan, the CEO of Boxy. So representing worlds of TV, publishing, uh, you name it. Get away with Thank you. Um, the, the topic for today's panel is Evolve or Die. And I think that Michael and Heather asked me to moderate it because they wanted some perspective from both the media and technology world. And, and I think it's a good moment well, no to talk about this topic because it's really about it. how media is shaping to get content it. and how <laughs> in the technology world and at the same time technology is reshaping media. When you look at some recent examples, whether it's Avatar or it's Google TV or it's Modern Warfare 2 to the iPad, what you could easily argue is these two industries are evolving together. So let me quickly introduce our, our panel. Um, Fred Davis, uh, all the way to, to my right, is the founding partner of Code Advisors, which is a new investment bank. And uh, previously, he founded one of the leading law firms in the music and entertainment business, and he represented people like the Black Eyed Peas and Lincoln Park. And more importantly, lately, he's been working with companies like Spotify and YouTube and MySpace and Rhapsody to help them make their migration into the entertainment world. Um, Abner Ronan is the founder and CEO of Boxy, and uh, to this group, I'm sure Boxy really doesn't need an introduction. Uh, to, to my right again is Sarah Chubb. She's the president of Condé Nast Digital, and she leads all of Condé Nast brands as they move into the digital world, whether it's Style.com or Epicurious or GQ.com or Wired.com and Reddit and Ars Technica. And these have become big sites. And Epicurious is one of the first uh, online businesses which has actually moved to television. And uh, it's, it's really one of the first programs that come from the web. And, um, and then finally, John Hagel, who's been a friend of mine for a long time. He's co-chairman of the Center for the Edge. And it's a research center in Silicon Valley. He's been in the Valley for over, over 25 years as both a consultant and as an entrepreneur. And his latest book is The Power of Pull, which he wrote with John Seeley Brown. So we have very little time today. And so I've asked each of the panelists to keep their answers fast. And I've asked them to mix it up and interrupt each other. So to start off, Abner, the question that's on everybody's minds with last week's introduction of, of Google TV is, uh, is what is it going to mean for boxing? And Boxy, you promised to create a different television experience, one that was more of an apps-like experience, and a lot of people were so excited about it. But today, does Google TV change your outlook, or does it enhance it? We're not sure yet. I mean, we watched the announcement, the whole office, you know, crowded, uh, crowded <laughs> iMac to watch it live. Um, and bottom line, I think, if Android uh, finds its way into set of boxes and TVs and Blu-ray players, or essentially into the living room, we think it's a great opportunity for for us, you know, for companies like Wired, to anybody that wants to bring something into the living room. Because the, the most difficult thing we have as a company is that if somebody hears about boxing from his friend or he read about it somewhere, uh, between hearing about boxing and getting it on your TV, it's a very cumbersome process. You install it from a computer, connect the computer to the TV screen, find out, find the remote. So having an open operating system like Android on those type of devices and make Boxy as easy to download as it is to download an application on an iPhone or an Android phone, it's great. You know, there's obviously there's risks for a company like ourselves when somebody as big as Google goes into, um, into our space. So it could be complimentary, which I believe it is. Um, it could be dangerous if they start doing stuff that we're doing. Now, I, I think we do have some difference in the vision for how the internet is going to get consumed on TV, at least based on the initial demo that Google gave. And they showed how you browse the web as is on TV. And I think it may happen sometime, rarely, but in most cases, I don't think that's a great uh, browsing device, the TV screen. I think the tablet, the phone, the computer are much 
much better suited for you to navigate and interact with the web page than the TV. Also, the TV is a social space. You watch it where with friends or with family. So browsing is a much more personal uh, experience and interacting. So I, I think the TV is still going to be a different experience than the web as we know it today. And I think people will gravitate towards 10-foot uh, optimized experiences rather than the web as is. And I think that's what we'll see, whether it's going to be based on HTML5 or Android apps or iPhone apps or whatever the technology, I think that's where it's going to go. Sarah, um, as you create an online and apps-based uh, magazine experience, what are you seeing happening with customer and user attention and engagement? Um, so we're, we're, what, almost eight weeks into the iPad experience, um, so it's, it's admittedly very early, but um, what we're seeing is incredibly exciting. And so I, I think everyone here probably as aware as anybody else that um, the sales of the iPad are faster and bigger than we had expected. Um, we're sort of um, amazed at what we're seeing both in the uptake of the apps themselves and um, also in the web browsing on the iPad. So um, for those of you who may be less familiar with our stuff, we have um, Epicurious has been on the iPhone and is now on the iPad since the launch of the iPad. Um, and we're seeing browsing on the, uh, of the Epicurious website, which um, is a very large website, it's about 7 million um, women a month, um, is at about 75% phone and 25% iPad right now, which is actually um, reflects the penetration that we had on the phone very early on. But we've gone over 2 million downloads, um, and a million of those roughly are since the launch of the iPad. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is that um, in the pickup of our issues, our, our magazines that are now monthly on the iPad, um, it, when you first make the sale, you don't know because it's a unified app, you don't know whether the person bought it for their iPad or their iPhone, but you do know after the fact um, what people are doing with it. And um, at this right, point... Pasta with uh, cream sauce and peas. Yeah, I love based that. On. I love that. Epicurious is, is flying is flying off the shelves, literally, you know, so to speak. Um, How many Apple Pie recipes do you have? We have, I think, something like 18,000 Apple Pie recipes at this point, and all of them have user comments, um, and it's, it's, it's actually a great app. We're also selling um, GQ has been monthly on the phone, and then on the iPad, um, went monthly on the phone with the December issue of last year, and is now monthly on the iPad. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's an interesting business that we're in because we're really in the audience business, right? And lots has been written about old media and, you know, what's going to happen now, although that story has been discussed now for the 15 years that I've been in this business, that what we're seeing is um, young guys <laughs> who have never bought GQ buying it on the iPad and experiencing and enjoying, we're um, talking to them after the fact, enjoying the experience. And also people who were subscribers or readers already who were picking it up on the iPad because either they love their iPad or because they want to have it wherever they are um, on their iPad on the train in the magazine at home. So we think it's bigger and, a, and an additive experience. And then the last thing I'll say about that, and, and I actually brought some stats with me because I think they're really interesting to people. Um, on GQ, we've had about 250,000 sessions since um, the iPad launched. Um, 60% uh, of them were on the iPad and 40% of them were on the iPhone. So that was a flip that is uh, you know, much more significant than the Epicurious model. The Epicurious is much larger. And we launched Vanity Fair um, monthly on the iPhone and iPad about 10 days ago. And we've had close to about 35,000 sessions since launch, and 90% of them are on the iPad. So um, definitely getting a lot of use for our kind of customer. And overall, we tend to attract an Apple customer. Better than reading it can be like the magazine. It's it's optimized for reading and the photographs look amazing. So Fred, um, we both Abner and Sarah have talked about experiences, and you've represented um, not just artists but also now some of the important digital companies. And users love Spotify. They love Pandora. They love YouTube. What do entertainment Think. Is, there, is their point of view now changing in terms of the role of these services? There's no question. Um, it, it, it starts 